Greetings, family. This is Bomani Tamba, and welcome to our Ghana conference call for July 11 to the 23rd, 2024. All right, and today's date is August 27th, and we're going to review information for our upcoming uh, journey of a lifetime next year, our 24th journey of a lifetime. Uh, so let's give a brief introduction of how we got here on this uh, journey of a lifetime. And what I, what I can do is also do a screen sharing as we are talk. But as far as our Ghana journey of a lifetime, we started our company Africa for the Africans in October of 2006. And we started the initial uh, introduction to our, our journey, our tours in December of 2006. And that was uh, in a small journey, eight of us, um, about seven days uh, in Ghana. And uh, we used that to build a foundation to build other journeys to Ghana, mainly with um, our, our documentation of videos, sharing information, uh, which was uh, at that time, uh, you know, the beginning of the uh, social media era. Uh, but in 2007, October, uh, we had a big group of uh, 42, uh, the second biggest group that we had. And that kind of sparked the energy of the interest in Ghana. And you know, at that time, Ghana was, you know, things were going good for Ghana and the country was growing. So we kind of built on to that experience and built uh, 23 journeys all together. The last journey um, I came from was uh, Ghana, May and uh, June of uh, this year. And, and then now we have the, things spaced out a little bit because we have other countries. Uh, but look into this, get more of us ready for Ghana next year, summer. Trying to create a nice, have a nice fresh uh, summer schedule because over the period of time we have had schedules uh, in the spring and also in the, in the winter. Uh, so this is the second time we have a summer schedule. So looking to just get things going as best as possible, looking to find out who is interested so we can organize uh, the flight information, uh, do our group booking early. That way we don't have to pay these ridiculous uh, flight costs in the months of, uh, in the summer months and also in the uh, winter months in December. But in general, that's how we usually do our, our group tour operation. Uh, we find out who's interested, uh, build a list, and uh, get flights arranged and everything else in the itinerary is things that we've done over and over. So that's a simple thing. We have a selection of uh, tour guides uh, and business people that we work with in the country uh, over the years. So that's the uh, easiest part of everything. And the hardest part is uh, just you know, finding people who are committed that's gonna stay committed and want to commit uh, at an earlier time frame. Um, you know, during the COVID, uh, you know, the height of the COVID, uh, 19 uh, drama, uh, you know, it's one of those things where most of the things you have to do is uh, last minute, but now we're in a better pace now. So that's what we're looking to do. So even with these conference calls, doing more of them at an earlier time and just sharing more information as best as possible uh, directly, um, you know, about just Ghana itself. Uh, so I'm going to spend time to just go through all of the Ghana information online and, you know, and then we just open things up and then we just have a dialogue about uh, whatever anyone may have a question about. Right. So this is uh, officially our 17th year, and next year will be the 18th year of our journey of a lifetime to Ghana. So uh, definitely always happy that uh, you know you can stay in business that long and you can just keep on delivering and you can keep on just stepping it up. So over the last few years, uh, the latest thing that we have built on to what we're doing in Ghana is uh, in 2019, we established the uh, Black Star Pan-African community or Black Star Repatriation and Pan-African community. And the purpose of that community uh, was to just put us in a more organized situation to get in land in a community and working together and looking out for each other versus all of the drama here when a lot of people went out and dealt with a lot of bad people and wrong people and people who took advantage of them. So now we're able to just really put together a project where we can, you know, since most of us know each other from traveling and, and you know, doing other uh, things with and networking, and it's easy to, to put something together where, you know, we're, we're the ones working on it and we're the ones building it and it's up to us and uh, we get it done. So, so far, so good. Uh, that's That has turned out better than all other projects that I've assisted other people with as far as, uh, you know, community or land development, because that's the purpose of also this energy in Ghana. And that's why it's called repatriation investment journey or tour. It's to get more and more people interested in living and doing business in the country. And now... Now, we're not telling everybody that they need to come and live and build in our community, uh, but that's just one option. Just like we have a few options of other associates that we have that we work with that are in different parts of Ghana 
that are doing the same thing. And we're just a network of people basically just looking to make sure people are accommodated when they're looking to live and do business and invest uh, in Africa. So that is uh, more so on the end game, uh, end game uh, side. Uh, so the tourism is the foundation of billing of what we're doing. So what I want to do is go right into uh, screen sharing and just uh, go through the itinerary. So this is our website, Africa for the Africans.org. And 100% of the information that you need when you're traveling on any tours is uh, always updated like immediately on the website. And then this is a slideshow for the last 17 years of so some of the best pictures with us just experiencing all aspects of uh, Africa uh, in, across different countries. And now once you scroll down, you can just click on the uh, Ghana link for July 2024 on the main menu. Or you can go down to the uh, middle of the front page and click on the link. All right, so once you click on the link, uh, these are the articles that uh, you have come up, which represent 100% of the tour information. The overview, which gives you uh, the price of uh, the tour package with flights, uh, one without uh, flights, and also an optional uh, single supplement uh, for either package that you choose. Uh, and what's included, what's not included, and also a list of all of the overview of the highlights of the, the different parts of Ghana that we're going to be traveling to. Right. Uh, the next thing is the itinerary that just give you a full day to day with the hotel links and what we're doing in the country. So you're clear on the full schedule and you can be, be prepared for the schedule. Uh, general terms, that's all the terms, um, um, uh, all the terms that uh, we, we need to just uh, share with you. This and it's uh, long information, but it's just trying to cover all bases of what we do. Uh, visa uh, guidelines. So I'll also go into that and I usually represent the visa guidelines by basically this sending you an email and the email represent uh, me filling out the visa application and um, saving all of the, uh, the, uh, the application pages um, to where you can just you know, print it out or open it up and you'll see uh, my selection as far as um, my answer for everything that I've put uh, in, on the application. Because these are applications that you have to fill them out uh, all the way. And then there's things that you have to upload. Uh, and these are also things that you know, once you're doing them and you you ready for help or if you get stuck or something, uh, you can always call me. I'm still the uh, you know, the technical support and business support person. Uh, what I need to remotely connect into your computer or just walk you to certain things or just assist you in any way is just something that uh, is just part of what we do here: technical and business administration. Um, so anybody ever need any help or consultation or you know or connections and things like that? Those are things that's uh, simple things uh, to do. You just got to be committed and ready. Uh, language translation is one of those things where this it's a basic introduction into the um, most cop the most popular language there in Ghana tree. So once you click on the link, it will give you a nice chart and a lot of nice uh, information as far as welcome and this basic uh, words that you can use. And also the tour books that we do, and I remember to this, well, the links for tour books are also right here on the uh, main uh, menu. Uh, the tour books, we are printing them out. We create digital copies of them and it will have the language translation in it, the business conference and business information uh, of our community. Uh, it will have uh, details about every single uh, site that we're going to go to with pictures and this uh, information, uh, introduction to our staff and crew and uh, introduction to this, the first president of Ghana, Kwame Nkrumah, and also the Marcus Garvey who inspired us to be on this path to uh, push for repatriation and push for us uh, living, doing business in Africa and um, connecting ourselves using tourism and things like that. And tour preparation list is gonna be an overview of all the things that we have talked about. And it's like a 30 point list. Uh, it talks about uh, meetup, uh, you know, wh where we're gonna meet up at, uh, baggage information, what to pack, what to bring, um, any kind of uh, medical information as far as the country or, or any, or any update as far as any requirement like yellow fever cards and things like that. And that's another thing too, more so nowadays, the country is requiring yellow fever cards. So it's a hard thing to just really just explain to everyone. 
but uh, there should be some options out there. Uh, so I always got to keep updated to see if those things are going to be required. Um, right now, it seemed like uh, there's no request for COVID-19 cards anymore, which is one of those very frustrating things. Um, so I'll make sure that uh, we'll always stay updated with those information. And when we get closer to the journey, especially like the last few months, I'll always just usually just go into these pages and update them, especially the preparation, because that's a list when you're ready to go, you print it out and that will help you get everything packed, organized, ready and focused. All right, so let me click on the day-to-day uh, -day itinerary. All right, so this is our Ghana Repatriation Investment Tour, July 11th to the 23rd of 2024. So we are literally, literally uh, in the 11-month era. And more so, when you look at the dates, uh, you can just say 10 and a half months. So the time uh, is going by and it will go by. So I just want to make sure we go, go through all the information so it's clear with everyone. And I'll definitely be on standby if anyone have any questions. So uh, day one, Thursday, July 11th, uh, depart uh, Atlanta. Or what I'll do is just make sure we all have tickets from wherever we are. And then uh, we're going to connect directly to Accra via Amsterdam or Paris. So Amsterdam will be KLM and uh, Paris will be uh, Air France. Uh, so those are you know, some of our flexible options. Uh, for the uh, you know, for these uh, summer flights. And my goal is to book all of us on KLM, but in some case, some people may be in another airlines. Uh, that has happened, but um, most of the time, we're all on the same airlines uh, connected in Amsterdam because all of your flights will go to Amsterdam and we'll all literally connect there. And anyone else who just literally just want to do their own flight package, you can follow these flight, um, you know, you know, flight times and flight information, and then I can also assist you online. Uh, but beyond that, uh, that's what we're looking to um, uh, do and connect. Uh, day two, Friday, July 12th, welcome to Accra, Ghana. So uh, what we're going to uh, do is uh, we're going to arrive in Amsterdam in the early afternoon at 12.55 p.m. Uh, for the, those of us that's coming from Atlanta, some people may arrive earlier. Um, no one should really be arriving uh, any uh, later than that. Uh, meeting greet is set for 1.30, which is usually two hours before we travel. Uh, so in this case, we'll depart at 3.20, and then we'll get to Ghana at uh, 7.50. So in all that space of things, by the time we get out the plane and uh, we go through passport control and get our bags, uh, we're looking to, you know, that's, we're looking at about an hour, um, hour and 15 minutes the most. And then um, our, our pickup, as far as our airport uh, pickup, will be right there outside for us. And uh, we'll have one, one or two of the guides out there waiting for us, and I'll be communicating with them. It's something that we've done uh, you know, for a long time to where it's uh, these things, you know, I call them simple things. Uh, so in this case right now, uh, we're, you know, last journey that we had, we stayed at the MJ Grand. So we'll have MJ Grand pick us up. And if we have a very big group, we'll have also the tour bus pick us up. And uh, that will be our first day right there into Ghana. Uh, so the main thing is that once you... Um, you know, once you get the baggage claim, you just organize the bags and then, you know, we're all going to be grouped together in a certain area. And then you know, once we all have our bags, uh, we'll make sure this um, guide you out. If anyone um, loses a bag or anything, uh, we'll make sure one of our staff members stay by to assist you with doing your bag paperwork. And then we'll get a ride to get you to the hotel. Uh, so uh, hopefully that doesn't happen. Uh, but um, unfortunately, uh, these things have happened a time or two, especially during the busy December schedule, which I think is really a few times that these things have happened, but also people miss flights and check in late and things happen. So I would always recommend that you make sure that you get to the airport at least three hours and uh, make sure your bags get checked through right away because that way your bags are in the uh, in the priority section. Anything coming last can easily uh, be missed and you know, put on another flight uh, and, and things like that. So these are things that uh, happen. So just, you know, want to just make sure we're clear on those things so we're all prepared. So MJ Grand is um, basically um, our best hotel in Ghana. It's um, in a, one of the best uh, neighborhoods called Isogon. So uh, the goal of, and also it's 15 minutes from the airport, but the goal to get us in this uh, neighborhood, which is a vibrant neighborhood, nightlife, shopping, networking, and beautiful homes, and this a nice, uh, you know, in a nice, uh, nice uh, neighborhood that does represent the beauty of what uh, you know you want to show people in Africa. Uh, so. 
Uh, you're going to be able to just uh, make your way around the neighborhood. It's also a walking neighborhood, and, and you can just um, make your way around and just enjoy this, the, the vibrant energy. On this street, uh, everything is basically uh, new, including the MJ Grand. Over the last 10 years, I literally saw this thing being built over the years. And, um, you know, we've been able to stay there a few times. Uh, the only thing is that I always tell them that they need to have more twin beds. Uh, so in this time, in this case, this time around, uh, they still didn't have a whole lot. But uh, some people were able to upgrade to single rooms and things like that just for the few days. And uh, beyond that, they're building a new section that I'm almost sure will be finished to where they'll have more rooms. So based on the size of our group, um, yeah, MJ Grand is a big hotel. So my goal is always to make reservations with them early on and lock in all of those twin rooms and lock in you know, everything else that we need to lock in on like the lower floors in case we have more people that are older that not not trying to go up certain uh, flights because uh, this hotel has no elevator, but it's only three floors. Yeah. Uh, but uh, beyond that, um, it is just a beautiful um yeah, just welcome to Ghana. Very professional staff, crew. And uh, we're going to work with them on a few of the uh, dinners. And then we're also going to find one or two places to go out to also have dinner. So I always want to make sure that this is a nice, memorable uh, experience for everyone. Uh, day three, Saturday, July 13th, uh, Avery and Tutu Mountains. So um, when we're going up to the mountains, uh, it's uh, basically uh, going right up to the uh, Trinity Home Academy. And that is um, a school slash orphanage uh, that we just recommend anyone who want to bring uh, school supplies bring as many as you uh, wish to bring and then those who want to you know, make financial donations um, uh, all good it's um, all this is completely just um, uh, volunteer uh, so that's one of the first things that we do so we get a chance to just go up uh, to the mountains and then to where you just have an overview of the whole you know the whole city uh, and uh, once you're up there, it's a nice, um, you know, it's a nice compound that they have built. I literally seen this thing built because they were in another place in 2007, and they acquired this land later on, and they just you know built it up. And they use basically the donations, things that they use for fundraising. And it's you know it's a proud set of uh, this young energy that you know you just you know you want to at least come into the country and try to support one or two uh, young initiative and just you know then you know because you know we're just looking to build on that energy, and you know want to support the future of our children and the future of our youths. And once we uh, leave from our uh, two, 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 we're gonna head down to the uh, wood carving village. Uh, we can just get a whole lot of shopping on and incredible wood carving arts. Then uh, for those who like nature walks, the Avery Botanical Garden, a century old, the perfect place. You know, we do a nice walking tour and talk about the different uh, elements of trees and, and and things. And it's just nice, you know, it's just a nice experience. And for those who may not feel like walking in or whatever the situation is, uh, we can always have um, the bus driver just have the bus um, going in if we just need to turn the air conditioner on because we don't want nobody to be heat exhausted or pass out. You know, we'll keep it running. It's all good. Your safety and your health is more important than anything else. Uh, so at some point, if you just feel like, you know, it is, you know, we all can have these issues uh, walking at times. Uh, so, but we always just uh, make sure that uh, you're good. Uh, and this, um, that's why we encourage morning exercise and meditation and things like that. That way you can just be you know, vibrant and ready. And uh, while we're there um, in Avery, um, we usually have one or two locations where we just get a nice, um, you know, nice lunch. Usually we order a few hours ahead of time, always key. Um, when you're doing any kind of orders uh, with a group, or at least um, sometimes we order a whole day in advance. But uh, usually you know, uh, anywhere from... Um, uh, two to three hours uh, minimum. Uh, so when you're driving on tour with us, you'll see uh, myself and the tour guide just working on these things and this and you know making everything smooth. Because uh, this is a um, you know, you're looking at a ten day itinerary and all these things has to be worked out and you know everything has to be smooth and on point. Uh, everything has to connect and work out. So it's always incredible how we've been able to just do these things over a period of uh, twenty three journeys and it just becomes like a natural thing. Um, and I tell people that, you know, when we're in that zone, we're just in that zone. And while we're coming down from the mountains, um, uh, we, have, we have a nice uh, university, uh, Ghana campus tour. We drive around the university and the tour guide us talk and explain um, different things going on in the University of Ghana. So the overnight uh, is going to be at MJ Grand. Uh, it's going to be for four nights. Right, uh, day four, Sunday, July 14th, meet and re 
meet uh, the repatriated Africans in Ningo and Prom Prom. Uh, and this is um, an area, it's about 45 minutes um, uh, with light traffic uh, to Prom Prom and it's uh, right uh, close to Atema. So it's also on the Atlantic coast. Um, as you know, it's uh, it's uh, you know Prom Prom, Tema, Accra, uh, but it's also part of the greater Accra region. So you're still in the, the same region. Uh, so once we go through the motorway and then we, we're gonna visit our good friend, Jerry Johnson, and he has this incredible African ancestral wall and uh, a three to four store, story museum, or I should say library, um, library slash museum that he's uh, building. Um, so, and the wall is a, it's a massive wall with uh, 90 incredible portraits. So you'll see different ancestors uh, from so many different countries. Uh, a lot of them represent America, but also represent many parts of the other uh, part of the black world. Uh, so you name them there on there. And uh, this is a good friend of mine. Uh, he's uh, more so a historian and uh, he's into uh, black empowerment and uh, culture. And I remember going there in 2008 and nothing that you see there was there other than the house um, uh, that he has built. Uh, so from there on, you know, he, just, he put his money together and invested in an area where it's now you know, more of a, a tourist site where people come. Uh, they have also uh, lunch, one of the best lunch we're going to have. And then also uh, there are guest rooms underneath the uh, restaurant. Uh, so it's, uh, it's a good two acre property. And it also show you show you what you can do in Africa by getting like two acres of land or a few acres of land. You can literally, you know, build your home. You can build different business and things on there, and make it a you know a compound where you just operate it as an international business. So these are things that we like to showcase. And then also while we're there, uh, Prom Prom is an area full of a lot of people from the African diaspora that lives there, and I've known so many of them over the years. Uh, I never know who's gonna show up. Uh, so the good thing of it is uh, different people show up at times. So it's always good to just get interviews. And uh, what they will do is uh, they'll just share their experience on leaving America and retiring in Africa and building a future in Africa, you know, future in Ghana specifically. Uh, so that's why we uh, named these uh, journeys repatriation investment because uh, we also have a lot of dialogue and connection into you know, living and doing business in Africa. But the primarily thing is a tour. So I don't ever want to uh, scare people away, but uh, when we have a chance to share more information and push a certain energy, we do our best to do it. But it, the, the whole day is you know, filled with the tours itself. Uh, so this is uh, be a, just a nice time to just uh, hear a lot of uh, feedback, especially for those who are looking to do things in different parts of Africa. Uh, Well-experienced people, uh, like the people we have around, it's always great to share information. And so day five, uh, Monday, July 15th, that's our cross city tour. So doing the cross city tour, it's one of those things where we just visit all of the circle places, uh, including Kwame Nkrumah Memorial Park, which is it's a brand new, incredible uh, display. They built a nice uh, building uh, to welcome you into. And then you have the park to go around to, uh, which has been just completely refurbished or upgraded or rebuilt. Uh, so that's going to be a great experience. I'm going to enjoy this one because you know, I enjoy recording things like this. Um, and it's, you know, it's, you know, it's these, uh, it's sort of, you know, trying to push the energy to where we just not going places to just go hang out in the country. We're actually just, uh, learning, uh, and also sharing information about, uh, and the future of the country. So, uh, Ghana is doing well with, um, this establishing these, uh, tour and historical sites and they're looking to just rejuvenate, uh, the city of Accra and make it just more modern and vibrant. Uh, so they're getting there. Uh, so. When people ask about um you know about Africa, what you're gonna do, uh Ghana specifically, this is a whole list of things that uh, we're doing. And uh, while we're there, in, uh, while we're there in the city, um we're gonna also visit Independence Square. So you see the big black uh, star on my jersey. You'll see a big monument of 1957 Independence. You will also see a big uh, area full of the colors red, black, green, and gold. Uh, so Independence uh, ceremonies are kept there, and it's a big square. They also have the uh, uh, the stadium that they play, uh, the Black Star, uh, which is this is their jersey, play at that soccer stadium. Uh, you see the coat of arms there, and and th this will lead you into uh, Osu, uh, this part, this uh, roundabout. Uh, and this is um, incredible, this uh, history. So I usually just have, make sure that we have a, a great tour guide to just uh, break it down. Uh, and we usually just proceed to the W.E.B. Du Bois Center, 
um, and also the George Padmore Library. So that th those two represent the African diaspora, one from America, one from Trinidad. Uh, so we're showcasing uh, the, and the, the uh, influence and connection from African diaspora. Uh, so that's uh, you know one of that energy that uh, we just create on these journeys and want to make sure that we create something to where it's relevant to you in your life and and, and things like that. Uh, so that's what we, are, we was talking about earlier about uh, you know Liberia trying to really focus on you know, Ghana and Liberia and use these historical foundation of the countries to really just build a strong future. So that this day uh, is one of those long days. Uh, once we get back, you know, we enjoy dinner. But uh, once we finish dinner, we have uh, the Repatriation Investment Conference. Uh, so that's going to be a list of different uh, people presenting. Uh, we usually have at least one attorney, one person from the Lands Commission. We usually have people talking about uh, health and wellness, uh, talk about uh, sovereignty, talking about um, how we can make a better move and live and doing business and how we can uh, really connect into Ghana better, uh, things like that. Uh, so different people, they are sharing different experience. And then after that, it's a whole lot of networking. Usually we go by the, the pool bar area, cards, dominoes, uh, social drinking, um, networking. And uh, there'll be people out there, uh, vendors, uh, with things uh, people want to buy, artifacts or clothes and things like that. So the goal is just to always create a nice presentation. So that will be our final day there in Accra. And that is our four-day schedule in Accra. Uh, so first day welcoming us to Accra and then three days of tour uh, just in different parts you know, from up in the mountains to Prom Prom to Accra City. Uh, day seven on Wednesday, July 17th, that's Cape Coast, uh, excuse me. Uh, day six, Tuesday, July 16th, that's our Black Star Pan-African Community. Uh, so we're going to go from Accra to um, Jahadzi to Cape Coast, Elmina. So, so we're going to push out early in the morning. And um, it's usually an hour and a half, two hour ride uh, from Accra directly to our community land. So we're going to go visit our office. And um, you can just take a break there and use the restrooms, connect to Wi-Fi or certain things. And then we're just going to do a tour of the office and talk about the, uh, the business operation that we're running there. Then we're going to take you to the 15 acres, uh, maybe meet a few people that are, are living there and also people that are actually building their homes. So it's a whole bunch of construction going everywhere. Uh, so you'll be able to just see in real life uh, the progress of uh, the uh, jungle area that we cleared out. Um, that we cleared out uh, actually, in, it was actually 2020. And we started clearing the land out. And um, this is what we built from a jungle of bushes and looking to just build a fresh civilization in a dense popul populated town, uh, which should you know, be perfect for those who want to actually come live and do business in the town. It's just, it's only one community there, uh, which is a community that we have our office. And um, it's, you know, it's, it's rural. It's a nice place. It's clean. Uh, but uh, that's where, and, you know, places like that, the most talented people, they're going to go to other parts of Ghana and make a living and do things. So, it's uh, what it is. Uh, it just gives us a great opportunity to just build onto the town and uh, get things established. And it's in a perfect location. Uh, it's uh, between um, Accra and Cape Coast. And it's also about, you know, it's right there on the Atlantic Coast, uh, on, right? So you're right there by the, uh, the beach. Uh, our, our 15 acres is about two miles. And our 60 acres, which you also visit, is about a mile away from the beach. Uh, so it's a um, nice uh, setup to where eventually we get the right people to work with and uh, we can also build another phase uh, of uh, what's going on in the beach and you know, uh, transform that into one of those towns not saying that you know you're going you're gonna to transform it into Myrtle Beach or Miami Beach and things like that but you know the goal is you now you're creating a, a town where we are the investors as a people um, you know different people from the, uh, the black African world are the investors of the things that runs a town all the business all the operation and we just make it a, a space to where People who normally uh, want a vacation that can't really enjoy a vacation, they can come to a town where things are reasonable for them because they're, you know, they're part of the country. Uh, things like that, um, and also just make the place vibrant. Uh, you know, things that we do uh, in the tropical world, uh, beach parties and things like that, uh, soccer, volleyball on the beach, uh, and things like that. Try to create a, a energetic environment uh, where you know the, the town is a walking town, and you're, you can you can walk from the beach and things like that. So when I first came into the town, it was just literally just, it was just, it was just tree, it was just nature. 
and it's just not much of anything. The community that we have our office uh, that didn't even exist. Uh, so that's how virgin it is. Uh, so that was the decision to move on uh, based on traveling around the country for, you know, for all those years and trying to find the best location and the best deal and the best setup. So thankful to the ancestors that worked out. I feel good about where we're moving on and looking to work with great people in the future on it and looking to show people our efforts and our energy are not uh, in vain in Africa. It's uh, we're building a future. Uh, so uh, once we finish, we're going to go to Cape Coast, Elmina. So drumming, dancing, all that welcome energy is going to be there for you. Uh, great dining for three straight days, uh, lodging. We have um, Carrick Hotel, which is a brand new hotel across the street. And then we have One Africa, which is nature. Uh, so for those who want more of this, um, you know, your, your modern feel of uh, hot water, AC, fridge, TVs, things like that. This is a newer hotel. We have the Carrick Hotel across the street. And then for those who want to be more into nature and be closer to the beach, um, that is our One Africa. So we have uh, both hotels provide enough lodging uh, for a full group of uh, uh, 40, uh, 40 plus. So that should be no problem. And when we get to it, I'll just find out where everyone want to be. And we just organize these uh, uh, you know, these roommate lists and things like that and put all these things together and just um, get them all done based on people, uh, you know, commitment on uh, the interest list. Uh, so that's uh, another simple thing um, once we have the people will organize those things. So these are things that uh, we just plan on going through with everyone to make sure that you're prepared, you're ready. And so while we're there in um, Cape Coast, Elmina, we're looking to do two tour days. Uh, we're there for three nights. Uh, so... Uh, day one, when we, um, you know, the next day, I should say, um, Wednesday, July 17th, we're going to be going to the Cape Coast African Holocaust Dungeons. So usually we are um, after dinner, uh, after breakfast, I should say, in the morning. Um, it could be anywhere from, uh, right now I have it set, it's set at 9 a.m., but uh, based on the night, uh, the night operation from before the welcome dinner, I usually slow things down. So uh, that's the only thing that we have on the schedule. Um, and the uh, naming ceremony is just right at the dinner time. So... Usually we just need about a good two hours. So usually just uh, leave from uh, about anywhere from uh, 10.30, get there about 11 o'clock and uh, by you know, two o'clock uh, we're back. Uh, incredible presentation, very emotional. And uh, we go to the underground part of the uh, African Holocaust dungeons, go to the main courtyard part. And also we go to the, the top part of the uh, African Holocaust dungeons and everything is explained in full details. I, I wanna say I have more videos of uh, African Holocaust there at Cape Coast and Elmina than any other video videos. Uh, it's just something that that took you know you know you just wanted to share as many. Uh, I mean the presentation was so vibrant and it connected you to some of the things that you have studied, uh, to where you just wanted to just get the presentation and just share it all all online and and you know hope that draws the interest of more people to come, more people to take the African Holocaust serious. Just like you know I seen I seen the magic I seen. The magic that uh, the white European Jews have pulled off based on uh, them using their their um, Holocaust to market themselves um, you know, for different things that they have uh, been able to do. Uh, so um, never always trying to just beat and uh, saving uh, anyone's uh, head and everything. But I always wanted uh, to just use that comparison and let people know, hey, you know, other people have used those things to progress themselves and also to get more of their people interested in us uh, you know, doing things seriously as a future as a people. And uh, naming ceremony, um, I'll get everybody date of birth and we'll just uh, create these uh, naming certificates and things like that. And it's just, it's more so a nice presentation. And uh, it's just very upbeat and energetic. Uh, the last footage I'll have up uh, maybe uh, sometime, uh, not maybe, but sometime next month as far as the naming ceremony. And you know, you, you know you can always look back at some of the previous uh, footage. So we try to create uh, this this energetic energy of this things to just make you feel welcome into the country, make you feel connected. Uh, so this is it right here. Uh, the next day, uh, Thursday, July 18th, um, that is the Akoma Academy. So I'm almost sure that the uh, school won't be in. Uh, so usually we just get the supplies and we get some to the school. Uh, so there's still their donation. And also we just share some with the uh, children there at One Africa. Uh, so that's how we uh, work that out. And then uh, once we're there at One Africa, the goal is um, they lead us to find out uh, who wants to go to the Kaku National Forest. So I'm, never, I'm not trying to scare anyone, but I'm always telling people that it is uh, 
you know, it's a little hike up into the forest and then you have to cross over several canopies. And uh, it's lots of videos on it. Some people think it's terrifying and scary, but uh, if you have the will to do it and you want to do it, uh, come out and uh, do it. But I uh, do usually just recommend it for people who are, or AKA athletic, uh, I'm not trying to say anything about anyone else, but uh, it's just, if you're athletic, you're good. Um, but anyone who's willing to do it can do it. I've seen, I've seen people up to 90 years old do it. So it's uh, it's no limitation. Um, it's just you just wanting to do it. But uh, definitely want to make sure that uh, you're in good shape and also that uh, you don't have any leg or foot issues. And uh, when, you try, uh, when you're going with us, I want to make sure that you have a good pair of footwears because you are, you know, it's, it's a rainforest and it's in, it's, um, there's rocks going up there as you go up to elevation uh, to get to cross the canopy. So I want to make sure that if, you know, in case it rains or anything, you know, uh, you're not affected by slippery rocks or, and we just try to make sure that uh, you're good. So uh, part of the itinerary, uh, think about uh, what you're going to wear and things. Be comfortable in the daytime, but in this case, make sure you have some good footwear on or days when we're doing um, you know, walking tours. So after the uh, canopy walk, um, you know, we may have some optional swimming in Coconut Grove. Uh, that's always uh, optional based on how the schedule flows. And uh, that will actually uh, uh, be our, our schedule right there in our Cape Coast Elmina. Uh, so One Africa, uh, while we're out uh, there at One Africa after dinner, uh, for those who want to play cards, dominoes, socialize, uh, we play music, uh, we just try to create a vibrant uh, social energy because uh, when we're in the city of Accra, we usually uh, go out to different uh, nightlife energy. But in this case, you know, we're on the resort. And this gives you, give you a chance for those who uh, may feel like it's been a lot of movement to just relax. Uh, you can skip the canopy walk and you know, that basically give you a, a free day. And uh, the other day, uh, we don't, you know, when we do the African Holocaust Dungeon, that's, uh, you know, it's, it's, that's not a long day also. So basically, most of your long day is going to be like those uh, three tour days in Accra. It's like those are full days. And not saying that these are short days, like that's short, but uh, you're getting your tour energy out of it is just spaced out a little simpler and not uh, so much involved each day. Uh, so day nine, um, July 19, Asin Manso to Kumasi. So this is also part of the second African Holocaust um, day. The first one, we usually dress in all white where we go to Cape Coast. Uh, this one, we have a combination of red, black, and green and gold uh, combination and the colors of the country, the ancestral energy. Uh, so it's a um, very in detail presentation. Uh, Asin Manso represent the last bath of our African ancestors who were marched down from the Northern region uh, before they were auctioned off or taken to Cape Coast, Elmina or other neighboring dungeons. Uh, so the presentation talks about uh, the river, the ancestral river and, and explain the last bath and you know go into full detail and then the beginning part of Ascent Manso is a few graves that represent African ancestors from uh, New York uh, and, all J and Jamaica that were returned back. And other one also represent, one that's not been unveiled is from Barbados. Uh, so those are grave sites right there and it explains the history of um, uh, Pan-Africanism and repatriation. Uh, so those are the two uh, in-depth uh, days uh, that we have uh, for, you know, so that's what I love about this is one of my best itineraries because it's so balanced. Because uh, in some countries, you're not going to be able to find those. Um, you know, for those who are trying to reconnect and trying to find what happened to your African ancestors, Ghana just honestly just delivers. And that's why we just really just started in the beginning because it just created an energy for you. You want to be interested in the country. You want to find out what happened. And then from there, you, you, you start seeing different things in the country. And it, it gets you open to the country in the future. And, you know, honestly, that's how... I got involved in the country. Yeah. All right. Uh, so uh, from there, I said, man, so we're going to continue on to Kumasi. And that's usually about a four hour drive. One we'll definitely make sure everybody's relaxed. I'll we'll stop by somewhere to get, uh, and get some, you know, get some lunch and then you know, continue on to Kumasi. And when we get to Kumasi, as you know, just like the other days, you now we have our dinner ready. Uh, and this one will be a dinner buffet. So, uh, overnight at the Micklin Hotel in Kumasi. And so while we're in Kumasi, we have two days in Kumasi on tour. So those two days in uh, Kumasi uh, represent uh, the first day, uh, we actually just go to Kwame Nkrumah, uh, University of Science and Technology. Very impressive, especially when you're coming in and you see this uh, 
the big um the big entrance uh with Kwame and Kuman and they have another statue. Uh, and then you just go to and then uh, the tour guide go to the history of um uh, Kwame and Kuma, uh, this vision as far as building a uh, university based on science and technology. You know, is you know, he's very this the man was ahead of his time, man. Just someone that I just really disrespect and I was uh, just um, have it uh, have him in our you know tour book, and just you know, try to introduce as many people to him and Marcus Garvey. There's two visionaries that really changed the scope of how people like myself look at life in the world, and just want to get involved in this uh, Africa. Uh, and uh, while we're uh, there, uh, in, uh, Kwame Nkrumah, uh, Kwame Nkrumah Science and Technology uh, University, uh, we're just driving around as many parts of the university as possible. Then we're gonna head to uh, Ejitsu. Um, so that's where we're going to just learn about uh, Queen Mother Ya Santiwa, uh, the warrior empress. Uh, so that's the jitsu. And then we're going to continue on to uh, Banware, the famous uh, Kente Clock place uh, where you know you get to the Kente production factory. Uh, always a great place to do a, a presentation. But you literally see uh, the guys that are weaving the fabric. You see them just weaving it manually on wooden machines. Uh, and it's just impressive. And then you see all of the end work. So that's what you see there. And also when you go to Intanso, which is in the direction of us going um, uh, back to Kumasi, uh, you know, you'll be able to just uh, get to a location where you have these incredible Dinka stamps. And uh, you can just uh, select your uh, Kente cloth and just create your stamps. Uh, so those are some of our cultural experience uh, in the country. And then now, while we are there in Kumasi, we usually head over to Ike's Cafe and Grill for lunch. So we usually just uh, get the orders early and I just usually call the manager and I just uh, text it to him and then give him a time frame of like one o'clock when we get there. And then we just enjoy our, you know, our lunch and then relax, kick back and then return to the hotel for a pool party and then dinner is at seven. Uh, next day, uh, day 11, Sunday, July 11th. Uh, now we're going to be visiting the Ashanti Palace Museum, another impressive presentation that um, museum uh, entrance was also rebuilt. And um, the only issue that I always have with them is that they would never let me record inside, with the exception of one or two times. So I really have any inside footage of the actual presentation, but uh, it's a lot of historical um, artifacts uh, in there. It's, just, you know, it's a nice museum, but it displayed the history of the Ashanti uh, and how they came together. Very impressive story. Uh, so these are things I don't ever get into details with. I said the professional tour guides explain it, and then I just do my part and record and document it. And then us, you know, we learn in this. Uh, but uh, that's one thing I love about uh, Kumasi and the Ashanti Empire. There's very brilliant histories. Like, if you ever wanted to tell your children about this great Black people who, who just, you know, put their empire together to defeat uh, the British, you know, you know, you, you, know, you talk about uh, Nani and the Maroons, you talk about the Ashanti Empire. Um yeah, so both uh, Jamaica and uh, Ghana, and then other other places also. But this is just one of those history that we just that's unfold in the museum. And uh, once we are finished uh, in the museum, uh, we're gonna head to uh, the culture center. Now, the culture center is where I recommend. Uh, we have one in um, in our crowd. We talked about earlier at the art center uh, doing the city tour. Uh, this one is the same, uh, but this it's organized a lot different. Uh, I like this one better. It's uh, less stress if you understand know what i mean and um the prices are very uh you know, the prices are much better yeah uh, so uh, i always recommend that you just shop throughout the time frame but this is a good time to do your final shopping and then you know when you finish uh you can just meet us meet us at ike uh, ike's cafe or you can just get on the bus with us and we'll be at ike cafe ike's cafe is inside a cultural center so this will be the second time we visit a cultural center but the first time uh we won't do any shopping because we did have done a few different uh, sites already. And that's literally our best option for um, you know, for lunch. So this gives you a chance to have an incredible international and uh, local menu. So what you're gonna do is this, um, I'll, first of all, what I'll do up front is uh, I'll get a, a text to the group page ahead of time where any, everyone has Wi-Fi, and then you just text uh, back what you want. But it gives you a, a list of incredible options. Say example, if you want more local food and things like that, you'll be able to literally just select those things that you want. Um, the dinner is dinner. Uh, you can order what you want on some nights, uh, but beyond that, we usually have a general buffet based on all the things that people eat uh, um, and based on this, our experience with this, traveling with the same group of uh, brothers and sisters uh, across the uh, African diaspora.
Yeah, so that is actually just a uh, last day there in Ghana. And it's always one of those days you're like, oh my, you can't believe like uh, tomorrow you're leaving. Uh, but so, yeah, you know, so what I recommend is, you know, come by, enjoy it, time at the pool party, socialize, we play some music. Um, and then we just enjoy uh, dinner, which will be right there at the um, hotel restaurant. And just, um, just, you know, close out and enjoy last night. And when we in Kumasi, uh, we have uh, one or two night uh, life options. For those who just want to go out and just socialize, it's not like hardcore party in like Miami. Like that's not uh, what uh, we're here to do. We don't want you to just party till you get back in five o'clock and you just can't enjoy the day that you paid for. You know, so it's uh, something simple. Uh, day 12, Monday, July 22. Uh, that's uh, the part from Kamasi to Accra. So you're looking at anywhere from about a five hour drive. Once we get to Accra, my goal is to have a nice farewell dinner uh, for you. I have several different options. I almost never know what option it is because uh, you're trying to not limit yourself and you're trying to see other options. Uh, but it's also based on the time and a goal is to get you somewhere where you know, the, you're Basically, your farewell dinner is ready, and you just enjoy your farewell dinner. And we do our, you know, uh, we do our hugs and goodbyes and final pictures and final just uh, thank you and appreciation and final just farewell to everyone. And then um, I'll be staying back. I don't know who else is staying back, but if you decide to stay back, just let me know. Give me a date and say, hey, I want to come back August 30th. And I'll say, no problem. Let me just um, get the ticket uh, information before I send it. Uh, send it with the date of your return. Or just uh, get a change after we set it up. Uh, either option will work. I've done both. And uh, it's never been an issue changing our flights uh, in Ghana. And that's what I love about the Delta KLM booking. And uh, no change fees. And usually the flight prices are in the same price. Uh, so the only thing is the difference of fare. Uh, so that's a good option for those who want to stay back longer. Uh, you can always go to the eastern region um, and you know enjoy the lake, go up uh, to the you know, further into the country or go to the northern part of the country, go to the west part of the country or go to another country, um, you know, because Ghana basically have flights to many other country. So family, that is our incredible itinerary. So uh, just, uh, I just always excited about that itinerary and uh, overview. I could just, since we're on here, let me just click on overview real quick so we can just see. Right, overview. Uh, so this is our overview. This is our tour package and uh, tour package price is always because of those expensive uh, tickets. Uh, so for those who can find better deals, uh, definitely recommend package two. So tour package is 4,400, which will include flights. And below we'll talk about what's included and what's not included. Second package is 2,700 and you just, uh, only thing you have to do is get your own flights, but everything else is included. All right, uh, the tours include um, transportations and tours throughout Ghana. Uh, we do our best to just find someone to do exercise and meditation, usually from the group or maybe another volunteer. Uh, what's always included is daily continental breakfast and gourmet dinner. Um, the next person that come up to me and, uh, and try to give me money for dinner again, I'm just going to take it and give it as a tip or something. Uh, but uh, this all, but they just tell me that sometimes people don't look at information, but uh, or maybe you know, but we go over it, and also I have the same information in the book. Uh, but definitely want everyone to go over the itinerary, the overview, and all those actual files. Um, you know, we have time to go over it, and it's a quick read. I made sure that the texts are nice and bold, and the spaced out as best as possible. Yeah. And so we have our accommodations based on double occupancy. So for those who want single occupancy, uh, that is the option that we have above. Uh, business and investment conference, uh, entrance and access to our sites and activities. So basically a full tour package. Uh, so what's not included is lunch, group tips of uh, $100 uh, each. And that covers uh, basically the logistics of uh, everything that we need to do and all the people that are doing things for us, including those drummers, dancers, welcome party, people who are working bags and people who are helping us uh, move around the country. Uh, there shouldn't be any camcorders uh, fees at sites, but um, I, I can't keep up with what's not, so I just put it on every schedule. But I do remember one place, uh, the Botanic Garden, um, and also one of the African Holocaust dungeons. Um, so 
it's been a few occasions, uh, but it's it's no big deal. It's just a few dollars, uh, maybe a dollar. Um, the camcorder is what get people excited, where they think you're shooting some professional videos and you're gonna get rich. So people looking at you like you know you know you need to pay something to the contribution, and so you know those things are always simple. You know whatever we have to do with this uh, workout and make sure that uh, we pay those things. Uh, and what's not not also included is a visa. Uh, that's sixty dollars for single entry, which I never recommend. Uh, which is only good for three months and a hundred dollars is for multiple entry which i recommend which is one to five years and closer to five years so once you get that email you click on the link and um, you just uh, and create your setup for your visa application and then you just use all my information that i sent in the email including the attached file and then that will be simple and then for those who ever need a visa email you can just always reach out and i can um yeah literally just um, go through it with you or get you the email. So these are the things that we talk about, the four days that we talked about earlier and the three days. That's almost every, all of the highlights that we talked about. And then one of our better group pictures right there at the Aquaba sign. So we have to, so love it. So that's the, and then there's another one. So I have lots of these uh, photos also on Instagram and just a ridiculous amount of photos on Facebook. And let me just show you a quick look at the Facebook. Like literally, uh, I, just, uh, I just go to albums at the photo. And some of these I'm working on trying to upload some of the uh, uh, spring and summer photo from my last journey. So I don't have them all there, but I still have a whole lot. And you scroll down and what you're going to see is every single country that I've traveled to in Africa, you'll see the tour. Um, uh, you'll see the actual um, a photo gallery, I should say, uh, of all of the uh, tours. And some countries are multiple galleries. So this actually go down, since we're talking about from 2006, this will literally go down to 2006. And it's just country after country, and there's different t-shirts, different colors. And then you'll see one that stand out, which is Brazil. Yes, that's us in Brazil in 2017. Yeah. And then us again uh, in Ethiopia, May 2017. 2017 was one of those years. It's you know it's something about, you know, sometimes something get into you just all over the place, but I was living in a bunch of countries. I still can't. I still don't honestly don't even know I pulled all those things off because we had another one that was May. So it's basically uh, May, May. And, uh, and July. So May in Ghana, 2017, I want to say it was like 43 of us. And then, then it was um, May in uh, Ethiopia. I'm trying to remember what even came first. I want to say Ethiopia came first. Uh, uh, Ethiopia had to come first because May is it it May and June in Ghana. And then uh, Brazil in July, 2017. I know that wasn't just it. And that's why I have to scroll actually up. Ghana, Togo, Benin, November 2017. So yeah, so family, that's been a world of this experience across the African continent and that's little Mr. Bomani Dakari. So that is, is 2000 and, 2006 and 2007. So that's the history of our photo gallery. on Facebook and you can always click on the link to Instagram, but let me just show one thing uh, real quick, which is YouTube. So YouTube page, as soon as you get on there, this, these are just videos a few days ago. I just, I'm one of those people that uh, you just post videos after videos every day because when you, you shoot videos at myself, you just have videos. Somebody comes in, next thing you know, we're doing an interview. And this one, my good friends, uh, He's traveled with me to Ghana, Senegal, Gambia, and Tanzania. And uh, he's just stopping by for us to just connect and talk about Liberia, uh, which him and uh, his associates are connected to. So that's um, what we do. Uh, this, that's my uh, energy. I try not to focus on too many other things. That's, that way I could just be effective. Uh, so it's been the last 17 years. And looking to just work with more and more uh, people and looking for us to just do more and more practical projects. Because... That's what we are now at the age of um, practical projects and also just visiting different countries. So looking forward to Liberia. So on the multiple playlists, um, 
we have all other tours on there. The library is a prep is a preparation, or you know, it's a lot of um, uh, presentations and lectures and live streams and things like that, and short videos. Uh, but not so much um, what we have for the other countries, which is just videos of us in the country. So when we get to Liberia, uh, my goal is to just uh, create a fresh playlist and just put about two hundred uh, clips uh, or more in there. In um, that playlist that we just represent all the parts of uh, Liberia and all the things that we are showing people. So these are all of the uh, videos over the last few years. Uh, they're basically in playlists. Some playlists is um, is um, it's a few video, not well, 60, 80 videos and some up to 200 plus uh, videos. It just depends. Uh, sometimes you get into a flow and sometimes you just end up shooting more shorter videos than creating lo longer projects. As you scroll down, that's um, you'll see, the playlist won't go down too far. It would probably go down to about 2018. And then you'll see other playlists also like uh, Egypt 2004 videos that I've just put up out of some of the older videos that I just decided to put this Egypt up because it was historic, historic. And thus, I want it to be a motivation for me for November next year to literally go back and shoot everything that I shot when I was, I don't know, I was like 26. Everything fresh, you know, and... Yeah, and just show it in, you know, what we love to show nowadays, which is uh, 4K HD. So when you're playing on your nice, fancy, big TV, you just feel like you're just walking into Egypt. You know, so um, just, I'm, I'm just always very excited about things like that. Uh, so it's, it's, you know, it's part of the passion and things. Uh, we're not very popular on YouTube like that, but I have lots of videos. But uh, some people are not trying to just look at footage about Africa all day long but because they're so distracted by so much other drama. But we encourage more people to check out some of these uh, footage. Uh, we try to make them as fun, educated, excitement as best as possible. Uh, so, and, you know, I bring my family along and just share, the, you know, we share a family journey together and just share with uh, close friends. So that's um, all those uh, interesting journeys. And the other playlists, uh, the Africa Tours and uh, an investment and conference call, we just have those playlists, uh, the Black Star, Pan-African Community playlist. And so that's how that's how things are organized on the uh, page. All right, so family, I appreciate um, everyone um, just uh, listening to um, the full presentation of that itinerary. So that is literally uh, it, family. That's all of the things that we're going to do there in Ghana. Uh, so and they're showing you all of the documentation. So just want to open things up to see if anyone have any questions. That way we can just um, now go through them. Hey, Bomani, the email you talked about, uh, yes. you send the, the visa email and all that, the passport document and all that, do you send that email out once you receive, receive a deposit? Uh, yes, uh, and then in general, once we start talking, um, once you ask me for tour information, what I usually do is send out the newsletter, the visa information, and then uh, the tour package details, which includes uh, payment options. So those are the three simple emails I sent out. And the deposit amount is, what's the deposit amount? I forgot. Uh, yes, our deposit is uh, $500. And then okay. once they make the deposit, I also need to get a confirmation of what airport they need a flight from. And my goal is to do my best to get them a flight from that airport based on Delta Airlines and KLM flight schedule. Slash Air France and uh, Kenya Airways. So they have a few different airlines that together. So that should accommodate everyone. And that's usually what we work out. So definitely, uh, Erica, I appreciate you inviting your family and sharing information with, uh, you know, with them. And just want to let them know I'm on standby always to talk, to go through information to make sure everything is clear, everything is prepared, and everything is ready. Uh, but I know sometimes the hardest thing is making early commitments, but that's what we're going to need, unfortunately. And I know we don't we don't need to get everybody uh, up front like that, but uh, definitely. Yeah, I know the deal. I, I, so, yeah, I'll keep pushing them. And I'll tell them the other option is, you know, they can pay for the land package and they can just get their own flights. But because uh, yeah, sometimes once the booking is closed, uh, we're limiting the options. Uh, so... That is uh that situation. So I want to make sure that uh they have uh, you know they see the flow of information, the pictures, the videos, uh, the documentation, the consistency, the things that we do. Because this is the twenty fourth journey, and that will be uh the eighteenth uh, year. Uh, so 
it's just uh, you know, simple. The hardest thing is to get the people. <laughs> And we have a few more people online. If you can uh, unmute yourself and introduce yourself and just um, let me know if you have any questions um, uh, about the uh, overview, the itinerary, or any of the information that we've been sharing. Thanks, Shia. All right, and it's all good. Uh, so. We're basically uh, literally just um, going through the full uh, detail of the actual um, you know, tour information. You know, we can always go into more uh, when we talk about the uh, departure reminder list and visa and things like that. So what I'll do is uh, do a quick share. And just going to look through a few information on the visa and the departure reminder list. So family, we are back on the website, africaforafricans.org. So what we're going to be doing is clicking on the Ghana link again. And we're going to be looking for Ghana visa guidelines. All right, so the main thing is uh, this is the link and all the things that you're going to need to actually fill out in the visa application. Uh, you know, this, you know, I'll be working my notes. So I have the notes in the email, but also I have the notes right here on this page. The only thing I tell individuals, they just have to be willing to scroll down a little bit more. Uh, so main thing they're going to want to know on the visa applications, the hotels and contact information and things like that. But I have a better updated version because I don't have the GPS on this one because part of the new application is the GPS location at the hotel, stuff like that. But um, I just try to just make sure that I have all those things are organized. So the sample application that you're gonna get, uh, it is literally from the beginning to the end filled out of everything that you need. Uh, but this is literally where you just start with your link. And then this is the information that uh, you just need to be clear on and be prepared for. Other thing I can share is a tour preparation list. <laughs> So this is one of those uh, beautiful long lists. So let's give a quick overview of the uh, list. So, you know, uh, the main thing is talking about at the beginning is this uh, the link for the tour information, then gratuities, you know, you get into this, uh, given this uh, recommendations that don't uh, look, don't look to fantasize uh, Africa. Uh, look, this come with, uh, this, you know, open to their experience, uh, their roots and culture experience. Uh, uh, four goes into the airline tickets and group booking and things like that. And just having, having your ticket and having things like that are ready uh, to go. Uh, then, you know, our recommendations of how to just get your stuff organized and just have ready. Recommending getting to the airport two to three hours um, or three to four hours, depends on the situation. Uh, eight and nine talks about uh, your baggage. Uh, so that's your check baggage, which is a uh, 250 pound bag. And then your carry on bags, which is just bags that got to fit yeah, in the overhead bin or you know, under the seat in front of you. So that's uh, the, the situation. And also I have this recommendation about when you're packing. So uh, just recommend that uh, you pack things that you want to get rid of in the country. You know, maybe you want to give it to the orphanage, the school, and maybe you want to barter and trade. And then now, next thing you know, you turn around and you have an empty fifty, uh, you know, empty suitcase where you can pack up to fifty uh, pounds on it. And then you know, so 
for those who love to shop and you know you can use that as one option and then you can use that and also another option is to pay for a single pay for an extra bag which is our uh, 200 dollars uh so those are the things that uh this list uh talk about now since we're doing these uh these uh, ancestral ceremonies we you know we talk about wearing the white and wearing the red black green and uh, 13 this talks about the group meetup time so when it's time when we, we have the meetup time and things like that and when we have a finalized schedule once we have our group booking uh, set then uh, we'll be able to update these details and then that's information that you know you have especially when you're ready two to three months before it's time to travel uh, those final things will be uh, updated and then when we do a conference call uh, we'll also just go through this list in uh, in detail and uh, this other part, uh, just basically talk about all the things that you need to prepare with and bring and have ready and things from medicine to all your the digital equipment, uh, you know, basic things like travel line, uh, make sure you have mosquito spray. Uh, and this, then, you know, coming further down is talking about the uh, exchange rate and what uh, what and how much uh, money you should bring and your options to uh, receiving our currency and trend uh, and basically converting your money. And talk about things uh just to pack and bring and just have ready you know including things for social gatherings snacks uh things like that uh cards dominoes, uh so this is a very uh interesting list and it will I would say it will more help you on the side of just getting ready and also to help you you know before you even get started on getting ready so it's something that you can look at now and then also you can look at when you get closer uh which will help you prepare yourself. So those are some of the additional uh, documents I uh, wanted to uh, talk about. But um, all of those things are on our website, and it's all available and ready for you to read through. And I'm also looking forward to uh, uh, anyone who want to talk with me directly and just want to go through information. And anything that anyone is requesting, you can just always text me uh, your information, name, number, and email address. And I can always send you any of the uh, information for the email, the newsletter, the tour package details, and also the uh, visa information. So I want to open things back up to see if anyone have any uh, questions before we close in the next few minutes. That's a family. If uh, no one else have any questions, I uh, definitely appreciate everyone's time. Thank you for joining our Ghana July 2024 uh, conference call as we are setting to get more and more of us ready for the 24th uh, Africa for the Africans uh, Journey of a Lifetime. Uh, literally this two four uh so dozen of these journeys and um this is also great for us expanding our energy into this incredible community that we're building so looking forward to showing and sharing more of the actual you know look of the you know our community development and uh looking to this build on as you know we build ourselves into that world of this uh, real estate development and investment uh in Ghana and other parts of Africa. Uh, so uh, for those who are listening and, uh, you know, when you're ready to retire, when you're ready to do certain things now, you know, you can always look at some of the options that we have as some options. And if it works for you, you know, we'd love to definitely connect with more people because we want to see uh, the different countries in Africa that we're building energy in, especially Ghana and Liberia, be a place where more of us can retire, enjoy peace, paradise, and just um, enjoy other parts of our life. So family, uh, the journey continues and now. Uh, uh, be on standby for anything and also um, adding more and more people to our WhatsApp group. So you know, when we're communicating and you're texting me and things, I'll work to just add you in that group. That way, if we have anything important to share, it can always be shared with interest members, not only via email, but also on WhatsApp. All right, so family, appreciate your time. So uh, let me close out and um, enjoy the rest of your Sunday and uh, have a great week. <laughs>